Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumed Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today I want to speak to you guys about the flow trigger, which is an environmental trigger, the challenge skills ratio. If you're familiar with the flow state and the flow model, you're familiar with a man named Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. You're introduced to this model, which shows the flow is right between control and arousal, boredom and anxiety. It just shows you this model. You start to understand that if you challenge yourself too much, but you don't have the skill set, it starts to get overwhelming, right? You start to become anxious. But if there's not enough challenge and you have so much skill set in that area, you start to become bored or even apathetic. So it's important for you to keep this sweet spot, this midpoint, this flow channel for you to be able to maintain that flow state. Now it's important to also note that this is the perceived challenge and the perceived skill. So if you're perceiving a challenge is very difficult, it's going to be difficult. If you're perceiving it as very easy, it's going to be easy. If you're perceiving it that you have the skill set in that area, you're going to be doing well in that area. If you feel like, no, nah, I'm not getting another certification, you know, you're going to act accordingly. If you believe you can't, you're right. If you believe you can, you're right. Why do we need skills? We need well-developed skills. You know, like nunchuck skills or like you know, <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite, if you're familiar with that scene. We need well-developed skills so that we're confident enough to meet the challenge. And we need a challenge so that we find it enjoyable and interesting enough to build our skill set. So we can actually continue with the task. We don't get bored with the task. So, you know, people in the flow state, they make it look so easy, but they're actually incredibly involved and they're engaged with it. But it can look very effortless, it can look very easy, but, you know, somebody in flow, they've been doing that thing for a very, very long time. And so, yeah, it seems like it's easy, but for them it took a really long time, you know, trial and error and eventually trial and success. It took them a while for them to get to that point, to get to that mastery, right? So basically, what you want to be doing is you want to be taking a personal SWOT analysis, okay? What do I mean by that? I don't mean like SWOT teams, okay? <laughs> Though there is a lot of flow research around SWAT teams and what they do and how they get into flow and, you know, how they use sniper rifles and things like that. However, what I mean by SWOT analysis is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Once you give yourself a list of these things, then you start to notice the opportunities. You start to make the most of your talents. You start optimizing what you're good at and understanding what you're not so good at. But also, you, you start to notice and tap into that genius zone because what you're very, very naturally good at that's something that's gonna get you into flow, not something that you're gonna to have to work extra, extra hard at deciphering, and it's not really in your interest, and you're, it's not really in your skill range, or it might take you a specific while to get to that skill set for you to actually get into the flow. So this is about skill acquisition and overcoming challenge, straight up. And that's the easiest way to describe it, and you can kind of guess, right? It's like, imagine you're playing a video game, and you, know, you keep losing in level one, you're gonna get bored eventually because it's too challenging. The game is just too challenging. You can't even get to level two. Like, what is this? But let's say the game is too easy as well. You're like level one, oh, two, two minutes later, level three, level five, level 17. Wow, this is so easy, right? So natural. I just keep winning at this. This is a piece of cake. However, even that version is too boring. So if it's too easy or it's too difficult, guess what? It's not gonna be a fun game. It's not gonna engage you. You're not gonna be in the flow state in either of those examples of games. However, let's say it's just the perfect level of challenge in that game. You gotta work a little bit hard and maybe you are going from level one, but then it takes you a week to get to level two. And now it's like a bit more challenging. You discover a new map, right? This kind of novelty, right? You're exploring the game. You start to learn more about the game. There's all this unpredictability of what might happen in the game. All this kind of stuff is going to put you and heighten your flow state. This is an environmental trigger. So first of all, environmental trigger, challenge skills ratio, meaning that, you know, an environment can also challenge you and also help you with skill acquisition. So there might be an environment that distracts you a lot. That's not really ideal for you to get into flow, is it? However, let's say you're in the right kind of environment for the right kind of thing that you're learning or doing. 
all right, if you're playing laser tag, you want to be in a laser tag arena, right? You don't want to be like, you know, outside. It's like you can't even see the lasers. What's going on? So in the flow state, we have something called S-T-E-R, okay? And this is like the kind of different modes of ecstasis, ecstasy, feeling good, performing good as well. So we have S-T-E-R, right? Selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, and richness. So richness is about richness of the environment. So it's got to be a stimulating environment. Now, it's also got to be a relevant environment in terms of what you're getting into flow in. You want to be a soccer player, you would need a goal, a soccer pitch, you know, two teams. You need a nice soccer ball with enough air, right? You need freshly cut grass, not too tall, right? You need all the right conditions for you to have a great game. So that is a part of the flow state. That's how you're being challenged. You know, in the same soccer game, if you held it in a nightclub with all those strobe lights, I mean, it's not gonna work, right? It's gonna be very chaotic. You know, you have to try to get the ball over the bartender's head and it's just, it's impossible to play there. You know, it's just like, everybody's trying to dance and you're there in the location trying to like juggle the ball around and they're gonna kick you out, right? So it's not gonna work for that specific environment. However, if you're trying to meet somebody and get into a relationship or, you know, have a one night stand or whatever, then, then a nightclub is probably the best avenue for that, okay? Any environment that you go into, it's going to have a specific way of getting you into the flow. It's going to be specific to the target person or the niche that it's trying to attract. So if you have much more of a chill, bohemian type of restaurant, you're not going to see a lot of business people hanging around there. You're going to notice a lot of millennials, a lot of youth, right, hanging around there. Or let's say that you go to a very five-star classy restaurant, you're not going to see like tie-dye shirts there in a very classy venue, you know, with open, opening their chest and like, you know, their chest hair or in flip-flops. They have a specific dress code for that venue. Certain environments can help us get into the flow state in different ways and it also incorporates the different personalities of the person who is the look I have going right now. I mean, I could walk into a surf shop and they'd probably sell me a board and they'd think I'm an expert. <laughs> However, I'm, I've never been surfing in my life, but regardless, that would be the first instinct probably, right? What you're bringing to the table, what are, what are your skills? What are you talented at? You know, what are you naturally good at? What comes very organically to you? What is in your genetic code, right? What do your family do? So chance favors the prepared mind. Repetition breeds artistry. Okay, so you want to do the thing over and over again, but you don't want to get bored doing it. So you want to find new ways to do it, you know, tweaking your workout a little bit if you're a person who's bodybuilding, in a sense. If you're doing a dance competition, you may want to practice with a partner, then without a partner, then the next day you go in and you work on some movements, then you watch videos, so you want to incorporate all your senses as you're learning. So there's many different things which you can do to, to apply the challenge skills ratio. And if you ever find that it's too challenging, just improve your skill sets. And if you ever find that you're very skilled at it and you're bored, you're not really enjoying the process, you want to give yourself obstacles or challenges along the way. So make it more difficult for you. What can you do to make it more difficult? Can you add another obstacle or a barrier in the way? You want to have that like sense of humiliation possibility there. You're gonna have to be willing to fall flat on your face, humiliate yourself, look stupid, all these things, and failure is an option, so that's what gets you into the flow. Because you're like, it, there's a 50-50% chance of me winning or losing, and so I'm in this pocket, this sweet spot, where I'm like maintaining that, and I'm walking the edge, the, the razor's edge, the fine line and leaning into the discomfort, eventually becoming comfort because you become much more natural with it. You know, you can use the flow model to discover why you're not achieving flow as well. It can also help you discover whether you need to improve your skills or you need to increase the challenge in certain tasks to help you achieve flow state. So notice that flow is right between arousal, when you're turned on, or you're very aroused by the situation, meaning you're, you're activated, you're alert, and between control, right? It's the sense of having something under control, creating the control of your environment, a control of the internal world, right? Internal and external control. By maintaining that alertness, arousal with that control, you're getting into the flow. Make these discernments about where you are in this model. Let's say that, oh, I'm feeling worried right now. 
So I can either go increase my level of challenge and have that worry turn into anxiety, or I can lower my challenge and have it move into apathy almost, right? Let's say that you're bored. You can either make that boredom go backwards and, and you know decrease the skill and have it go into apathy, or you can increase the skill and have that boredom move into relaxation. So I hope this makes sense having it be very uh, visual for you. You've gotten the clear goals, you've gotten the target of like, okay, this is what I want to do. You're getting the feedback. Now you're maintaining, are you challenged enough and are you skilled enough to build that sweet spot for yourself, all right? Have an amazing day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary. See you next video.